This video is going to be about pH, Ka and pKa. In the previous video I talked about acid spaces and Kw. In this video I'm going to talk about the pH scale, Ka, pKa, some calculations and examples throughout. Let's start with pH. Well pH is a scale commonly used by chemists because it simplifies the values of the concentration of H+. When we're talking about a solution containing protons, it could be very, very small, as in 1 times 10 to the minus 7. That could be the value of concentration of protons. And it could range to, say, 1 times 10 to the 14 protons. And you don't want to be writing out all those zeros or writing it in standard form. It's just a hassle. So what happened is a scientist many, many years ago decided to use the log scale. And log scale on your calculator could look like this, and it must be to the base 10, as you can change the base on some calculators, or it may look like this, depending on the calculator you have, or could just say log. And that's very important to remember when we're using the log scale, as you'll need to do calculations like that using that button. Now, this is used because when you do log to the base 10 of something like 1 times 10 to the minus 7, basically what it does is it gets rid of this 1 times 10 to the minus 7 and just keeps a number. So there's one thing I want to say is pH equals minus log to the base 10, very important to the base 10, of the concentration of H+. plus. Now what we do is we put the value in there, so it could be 1 times 10 to the minus 7. What log to the base 10 does is basically eliminates this 1 times 10 and leaves a minus 7. And as we've got a minus there, that gets rid of that minus. So when you put that in, the pH of this example here would actually be 7, which is that of water. And that's effectively the pH scale. We just, we're just taking this top number and doing the inverse of it. And it's very, very handy to use as we can look and say, oh, the pH of this solution is 7, the pH of this solution is 8, 10, 12 whatever it is, and we can just do a simple bit of mathematics to convert it from pH to concentration or from concentration to pH. And I'll talk about how we convert from pH to concentration later on in the video. Let's look at the pH of strong acids. Well, the pH of strong acids are quite simple because in my previous video I said a strong acid completely dissociates when put into solution, it's H plus and Cl minus in terms of hydrochloric acid. So if one mole of hydrochloric acid is used and put into solution, then we get one mole of each product. This is because it's just the it's just been split in half because it's a, it's an ionic uh, type substance here. So we can't physically have more moles of one thing than the other because we've got one lot of hydrogen and one lot of chlorine, which are going to one lot of um, H plus and one lot of Cl minus. And that's very good because we can then work out the pH nice and easily from that. Because pH equals minus log to the base 10 of the concentration of H plus. If we use one mole, pH would be minus log to the base 10. Again, you can put this in your calculator of one, and that means the pH is zero. So the pH of this solution is zero. And on the previous slide, it stated that anything below a pH of seven is acidic, and the acidity varies as you go lower and lower, and anything above the value of pH seven is alkali, and pH seven is considered neutral, which is what water is. That's as complicated as strong acids get. Now what's more complicated is weak acids, but before we talk about that, we need to learn about the value of Ka as it will be used to determine the pH of a weak acid. Well, Ka is just the dissociation, the acid dissociation constant, as Kc was the equilibrium constant as reactions happen in equilibrium with weak acids, again denoted by my previous video. So if we have a, an acid, Ha, this shows sort of the, the basic part, and then there's a proton added on. It's in equilibrium with H plus and A minus, as it's just a weak acid, it's partially dissociated into its products as such. Well, Ka, K represents the, the equilibrium constant. Now, we can, what we can say is Ka 
talking about acids here, hence the little a, is equivalent to the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants, as that's the equilibrium constant. So the products is H plus and A minus over HA. And it's as simple as that. So an example would be ethanoic acid, CH3, COOH is in equilibrium with H plus and CH3, COO minus. So Ka is just equivalent to concentration of H plus times by the concentration of CH3, COO minus over the concentration of CH3, COOH. Again, you're thinking, well, why do we need to know Ka? It will become apparent soon when we're talking about the pH of weak acids as Ka is used. And working out the units of Ka is just like on my equilibria videos where you take the, the units of the top and the units of the bottom, cancel them out, and that gives you the, the value. So let's talk about pKa. Well, as Ka, again, a bit like pH, has very small values. For example, ethanoic acid that we just went through has a value of 1 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per dm cubed. That's the value of Ka of that reaction. Well, we don't want to be saying 1.745 times 10 to the minus 5 or for a different reaction saying, oh, 3.7528 times 10 to the minus 6 or something like that. What we can do is we can use the log scale again for Ka. So we can say pKa, a bit like pH, pKa, is equivalent to minus log to the base 10 of the value of Ka. And if we put that into the calculator for this example just here, we would get a pKa of uh, Let's look at the pH of weak acids. So we've spoken about Ka, and this is when it comes in very, very handy. So one thing we have to look at is Ka is equal to the concentration of H plus, so the concentration of A minus, over the concentration of HA, that's just the generic formula. Well, what we can do is we can simplify this down even further, because when we when something dissociates, so HA dissociates into H plus and A minus, well, the concentrations of H plus and A minus are exactly the same. So what we can say is that's equivalent to H plus squared over HA. And the reason why they're the same is because you're having one mo molecule just being split apart into two. And if it's split apart, it's in its two components. You can't have more of one component and less of the other because it wouldn't have split apart then completely. And it's basically why we can simplify it down to H plus squared. This comes in very handy when calculating pH of weak acids. So if we go through an example, the concentration of ethanoic acid is 0.100 moles per dm cubed, and the Ka of this reaction is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per dm cubed. What's the pH? Well, how we go about this is we use Ka. So in this example, Ka equals on the bottom we have CH3COOH, as that's equivalent to HA, and on the top we have H plus squared. So remember I said we could simplify it down. So what we do is we can rearrange and put the values in. So we can times up by CH3COOH to say Ka 
times by the concentration of F inert gas, I'm just going to write Ea instead of writing it out each time, is equivalent to H plus squared. And that's brilliant to remember. Now to have more room for the next step, I'm just going to reset this slide. So now we know that H plus squared is equivalent to Ka times F inert acid. What we can do is square root it all. So H plus now equals the square root of Ka times by the concentration of ethanoic acid. And what we can simply do is just put the values in from the question. So H plus now equals the square root of 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 times by the value of ethanoic acid, which is 0 0.100, square root all that, and then we get a value of 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per dm cubed. Brilliant. We now know H plus concentration, but now we want the pH. We remember the pH is minus log to the base 10 of the concentration of H plus. What we can simply do is just sub that value into there, put it in our calculator, and pH then comes out as 2.88. And that is how we work out the pH of weak acids. So just to outline it in a step, we write Ka for that reaction, rearrange, rearrange, then, uh, well, rearrange for H+, plus. and then what we do is we just simply put that in to work out pH. So we write out the values for Ka, or the, the equation for Ka, in the form of the reaction, generic form, and then in the reaction that we want. We rearrange for H+, plus square rooting Ka times by the concentration of the acid, and then we use that value of H+, plus, put it into the log equation for pH, and that gives us the value of pH. Now let's look at the concentration of protons from the value of pH. Well, pH equals minus log to the base 10 of H+. What we can do with this is what my teacher liked to call the anti-log. Well, if log to the base 10 times by time um, times by the concentration of that when the concentrations are something like 1 times 10 to the minus 7, as log to the base 10 and times 10 to the power of something, they cancel each other out. What we then actually get to do the anti-log, we can do the concentration of H plus equals 10 to the power of minus pH. Well, the, the minus sort of cancels out with that minus, makes that a positive. And the 10 to the power of log to the base 10, they cancel each other out. And effectively, you can just reverse engineer the, the log way that you're doing pH, doing the, like I said, the anti-log way as such. And that's how you figure out the concentration of H+. So an example of this is what's the concentration of H+, if the pH is 5.20. Feel free to pause the video and have a go at on your own if you wish, but basically all you do is do H plus equals 10 to the minus 5.20, meaning that the value of protons are 6.31 times 10 to the minus 6 moles per dm cubed. And it's just as simple as that. You might get given this equation, or you may have to remember them. Well, for both of them, you may get given them, or you may have to remember them, depending on the exam board. But they're something that you'll use a lot when you come across acids and bases. And to be honest, when if you do past papers and a lot of practice questions, those uh, formulas will actually be ingrained in your mind. That's all for this video. If you found it helpful, please share it with your friends if they're struggling with the same topic. It may help them out as well. Subscribe for more of my videos as I'm putting them up as time goes on and there's plenty on there already and please like the video. Thank you.